escalation. This entire build is nothing but escalation of a rather mad idea. Let's take the stairs of Moria, flip that idea upside down, and then only build half of it to start. And to make it as hard as possible to build or paint. <laughs> Generally speaking, this entire video is an example of how not to build terrain. This is all rather stupid, but I carried on anyway. The idea was a cavern or subterranean ruin with a crystal studded wall. The lower level was crafted on this idea with the balsa wood frame, and then continued on with the footage you are seeing here. I would then take some XPS foam, cover the balsa wood, and create, create a type of stonework on top. I chose to take a bit of a break from the previous nightmare sets I've built and only use the plaster cast from the aluminum foil on the walls itself rather than the base. If you'll recall the Nightmare Frontier, uh, unexposed to elements like wind and rain, things like stonework are going to have a different feel to them. They're going to survive a little bit better. And since this is a cavern, it fits. The walkways were broken to give the players this uh, challenge, while the angle of them is very, very specifically selected for. If you're going to try this one at home, then you need to keep the size and weight of the minis you're going to put on it in mind when you start to put these ramps together. It uh, it takes some work, let's just say. And it's doubly hard when you get to the free-floating ones that just kind of end. But they do look pretty good. And they very much capture that broken stare, kind of Minds of Moria vibe I was going for. The new area started with a dead camera, but what happened was I used some large pieces of the, the plaster, the aluminum foil to create this wall, to continue the wall up of the cavern, and then in some balsa wood sticks to create a bit of an angled frame so that I could hot glue the plaster to the frame itself. The upper walkway level itself, it's a single large piece of foam that I carved with a rough stair pattern. And then I used three support pillars going in at an angle into the new pieces. I used three pillars to bring a degree of stability and anchored those into this new plaster section and then I would later secure that with a bit of sculpt -a mold just to kind of help blend everything together. Then comes the detailing on the underside of this upper level which you can now see because of where your eyes are going to end up and it was really 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 fun you can build a lot of character when it comes to the bracing and the broken end of that upper walkway was really fun. It was intended to mirror that broken pillar aesthetic right below it, but it has so much character. You can almost feel the earth is shifted and this entire piece looks like it might crack at any point and just drop below. But at the same time, it also sells the idea that there's something more, that this path led to something. And we're gonna get to that. On the opposite side, the support beam was added and allowed to extend just a little bit out. That little nub, it's got a place in the grand plan, just trust me. Did I mention that the lower level cardboard cutouts are removable? Yeah, that area under that balsa wood is going balsa wood of the lower level is going to be used at some point. The crystals are carved from glue sticks and the the open style of the back itself was done intentionally because I have a plan here. When there's a couple more pieces of this, I'm going to run some lights behind there and we're going to light up this entire
entire area. It's going to be very, very atmospheric. So make sure you are subscribed for that and get notifications turned on. The top rear portion of this was very, very interesting because I wanted to create something of a pseudo 3D landscape that a mini could interact with reasonably and still have it make sense. So I ended up adding some extra bits of foam on top of the frame to make a little area going in with a different type of uh, plaster cast. So let's talk paint. The interior was given a dark blue base regardless of what it was. Stone, wall, doesn't matter. Then you add some more blue and keep on working your way up with that wall to highlight it using more and more control until it was finally almost all pure blue with just a little, little bit of white. And that create gives you this nice blue gray looking rock. The stonework itself, working off that dark blue base, gets more grays and white paint rather than blue. The plan here was to use washes to really change the color and truly pull these two surfaces apart. The walls themselves get a wash that's a mix of greens, browns, a few blues, and then a very light coat of black wash. The stonework, on the contrast, got a much heavier black wash and then a little bit of brown on some of that coffee ground dirt looking material for the flat areas. That little dirt looking material was then given a little dry brush of white and tan to just help pick it out from the stone and kind of indicate that uh, maybe dirt and stone bits of stone are falling from the ceiling down, you know, slow decay. To get a little clever with the upper level, I wanted to work in some more color into the stone. So I went in and added a bit more brown to the wash on the upper part of the wall, the cavern wall. This really does help to sell the idea that maybe it's in a different stratum, that this cavern is artificial, and it helps to, as you'll see, blend that rear area in with the rest of it. Speaking of which, that rear area started with a very heavy brown base coat, highlighted with a series of lighter browns, and then some grays just on the very top, and just a very, very light white highlight. Over the flat portions and some of the wall itself to create lichen and that type of material, I used just flocking. And then I went in with some clump foliage a little bit later to hide some of the mistakes and some of the uh, gaps that had been left in the plaster. And it helped really build up some color and it really worked incredibly well. And there it is, the first part of the dark below, complete and far closer to the image in my head now than what I shared a month ago. Not, a, I'm still not a fan of how the webbing came out. It's not nearly fibrous looking enough, soft, and it's a little more clumpy than I really like. The webs on the walls came out much better. That may be something I may rip off and a future video. The pseudo 3D area on the back though came out so much better than I thought. It's given me a lot of interesting thoughts about what I want to do next, but it's straying dangerously close to being a full table idea at this point. <laughs> so we'll see. Using flocking instead of paints is, for me at least, a relatively new technique. And I think I've gotten a hand on controlling it and how to make it work. It more or less looks good. And it does 
does serve as a nice contrast to the blue grays of the rest of the build. Oh, starting over. I love the upper walkway and that broken edge piece. There's so much character to this. The free floating ones uh, are okay. The ramps and stuff like that, they're not, some, something about them is not quite right. And I I don't know. There may be something that needs to get expanded out here. I need to reconsider my options for the next part of the build. But overall, you know, we could work with it. Three-legged platform was a good idea. I like the way it looks. However, it needs more ornamentation now to match the upper walkway. That's for sure. But it did teach me a lot more about space, and this is where I really mastered that ability to get the right angle cut so that I can actually put minis on it. But ornamentation, yes, always need more ornamentation. So, I hope you all enjoyed this little bit of madness below the nightmare. I enjoyed crafting it, and I think the next part will be a connection piece. I'm thinking maybe a... Maybe a sunken tower, something connecting the surface level to the underground. That could be cool. We'll see. Make sure you hit subscribe and turn on notifications because you're not going to want to miss that. If it's half as epic as what I'm imagining right now, you don't want to miss it for sure. Oh, and remember to follow me on social media for previews and updates. When new videos like this are coming.